So I'd like I'd like to start off with um, uh, um, what this presentation is about. So I'll be giving a brief glimpse into the time that I've spent with all the amazing people that are part of the Vancouver Paleontological Society and how they helped shape the person I am today. Um, so before I dive into this, um, I'd like to state that the Vancouver Paleontological Society um, has been 100% one of the most influential parts of my life, um, the most important. And uh, without it, I would not be anywhere as close to the uh, person I am today. And um, so I'll be going over um, the different like key parts of um, you know my history with um, the Paleontological Society. Um, I thought it would be more fitting to do it in person. I was really looking forward to standing up in front of everyone during the symposium, but of course it's on Zoom. Um, so um, just kind of ignored the, the messiness of it. <laughs> So I joined the Vancouver Paleontological Society when I was seven. So I've been a member since then, basically 12 years of my life. And through those 12 years, um, they've mentored me and I've lear learned so much about British Columbia's um, paleontological history. And I've gained so many skills when it comes to fossil hunting, presenting, and um, it just kind of built me into the professional level at which some of these awesome people work at. Um, and they helped fuel my passion. So when I was about two years old, my mom took me to the Royal Tyrell Museum in Drumheller. And that was the day I knew I had to become a paleontologist. It was my lifelong calling. Um, and ever since that day, I've been wanting to read more books, consume more information. And I was two years old, I was tiny. So my mom did what she could. She got me as many books as I, I could read. And I kept saying more and more and more, right? Um, learning more words, building up that knowledge. And eventually got to a point where I was at like university textbooks and all these different fossil guides. And I, I just needed someone to talk to, something to do because I had all this knowledge, but no other kid at school had, you know, that same level, that same passion. Um, so she went researching online and she found the Vancouver Paleontological Society. And she was a bit concerned because I was like seven at the time and it, it sounded super professional, which it is. And um, she asked, hey, I've got my seven-year-old kid. Can he join? He's a kid or whatever. And so I was like, yeah, sure. And so I went and just like that, I found my home. Basically, um, they treated me not like a kid, like they, they, you know, it was it was great. And um, I felt very welcomed. And from that point on, I learned so much about our local fossils. And this was all new to me. I beforehand, I didn't know much about British Columbia's paleontology ontology right um so we went out fossil hunting on all these trips and i got um got to know all the local sites got to know how to fossil hunt what to look for and i built those skills through members teaching me and showing me um and i got to learn all about um all these local fossils and kind of find what i liked the most what i was interested in the most and for that i just it's so much like so much thanks to all those people who you know showed me the ropes and got me into it um and kind of fueled my passion in that way um so one of the first presentations i don't think it was the first one there was i did a table display um in bd before this but one of the first and most influential um parts of my life in the Vancouver Paleontological Society is um, the day that I was kind of welcomed into doing a table display in the Richmond Nature Park. It kind of paved the way to um, my, not really career, but I guess like something like that. 
in giving presentations at museums, um, schools, science centers, stuff like that. So I was seven, I think, in this photo. Um, and I had a few fossils um, that I've collected from the trips that I went on. I think I had Princeton stuff, some Harrison stuff, you know, the, the typical sites we all go to. Um, and then some just, you know, store-bought fossils and casts and stuff. And I was super excited to share the world with, um, share my fossils with the world and whatnot. And uh, so I got to actually meet a lot of interesting people that day through this event. And I continued to do this event ever since that day. Um, got loads of photos each year doing table displays. And I kind of evolved the table displays as I did it. Um, I got to know what looked better, what people like to see more, um, how to display things, how to put things. And you can see the progression from then till now. This is one of the most recent um, fossil displays that I've done there. And uh, you can see how much it's grown. I think there's like three or four tables in that picture alone. So I've, I've come a long way with the society. And um, from there, I actually have done countless, like I can't even fathom how many talks and outreach programs for countless different places here in BC. Um, in this photo, we've got the Museum of Surrey. Um, I did a few talks there, I think about 12. Um, this is um, to the left, some kind of center in Vancouver. And I did that, I think it was an outreach program for Britannia Mines. Um, down below, I'm doing a presentation in, um, I think that was Port Moody Rock and Gem Club. Um, above that, I was doing a few presentations. I got a gig every year at Van Dusen Gardens. I did a talk on um, living fossils and fossil plants. And this one's center, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. I'll just assume that you can. Um, this one's in Britannia Mine. I got a few uh, fossil displays done in um, uh, Science World in Vancouver. Um, there's a few rock and gem shows, really big ones with thousands of people coming through um, in Vancouver as well. Um, I did a few in Abbotsford, and this one is also in Britannia Mine. So I, I did lots and lots of outreach programs, and I loved it. It was it was something that I knew I was built to do. Um, I had the knowledge from all the members, all the digs, and um, all the field trips that we went on, and all the fossils. And of course, doing these, I got tons of practice in um, presenting and um, science educating like publicly. I know right now I sound a little shaky. I'm not really good on Zoom presentations. I like to see my audience. It gives me a lot more um, stability, I guess. So I've got a little bit of butterflies going on, but we're just gonna look past that. <laughs> just believe me, I'm really good at standing in front of a crowd and giving presentations. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. So all the fossils that I have on display in most of my presentations are local. I love sharing local fossils with the public and of course I have to go out and get those and luckily enough being a part of the society I got to go to many places and some sites I couldn't go to with the society but I got the locations went on my own and I'm lucky that my mom could drive me all across BC because some of these sites are hours away, three hours, 12 hours, it's crazy. Um, so here we've got um, a few different um, important uh, sort of field trips that I went on, some really nice ones. In the corner we got Perry, um, I think that's Gia and Kirsten, and we're at Harrison collecting um, Bukia and other bivalves like trigonids and stuff. Here I'm searching desperately for Anomalocaris and Cranbrook, um, one of my favorite fossils. I really wanted to find that guy, still haven't, but um, I'm going out there vigorously looking and hopefully this summer I can eventually find it. Um, down here was a really fun trip I went on with um, John and um, Rod and Oliver. And this one was out in Ashcroft 
And we were actually visiting a few sites that I went to when I was a wee little kid. Um, so that bring, bring back a lot of memories up here. I think this was when I was finding my first BC fossils before I was even in the society. So I'm with um, Pat and we're out, I think maybe on the Trent. And this is when I found my first like big ammonite, super exciting. Um, so he kind of got me into the fossil gig here before I was a member of the society. Um, out here, um, we're in Kitsilano Beach and uh, we've got, who do we got here? One sec. So we got Sydney. I think this in the back, we got Kirsten um, and, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, down here, we got um, Guy Santucci um, showing me some of the sites as well. And this one's out on the Bull River, I think. This is one of the trilobite sites. And we've got some more field trips going on here. So this is the Ashcroft site. Um, we're going to go back. So we got Jonathan. And we got Marianne in the back here. This one was an older trip. I think it was a few years back. And we pulled out some good slabs from that one as well. So these ones are kind of like a mix of old and new. We got my first trip to Ashcroft, um, one of the most beautiful fossil sites I've ever been to. You can see there's a rainbow in the background, winding rivers, really nice. Love the temperature there, all the dry bush and stuff. Um, and this one was um, a site where we had to go on private property. And can't remember how old I was in this one, but this trip definitely influenced me a lot, um, collecting these Triassic and Jurassic marine fossils. Very cool stuff. Um, this one's a more recent site. This one's the Princeton um, location that we'll be going to in the field trip. And um, I actually got this location from Andrew, I think of the Port Moody Rock and Gem Club. Um, I did a presentation for him and he showed me this amazing site with loads of insects and fish and it's become one of my favorites uh, that I go to very often. Um, can see an example of my enthusiasm when I was younger. We got, um, I think this is somewhere near Murr Creek. It's not the exact site but I was quite young when this photo was taken because you can see my brother there in the front. And then way in the back, you can see me up on this kind of eroded cliffside. Um, I was always one to just go off the beaten track and um, find all these hidden locations at sites, places where people haven't been. So um, in this one, I decided to just run up that hill and take a look and actually found some fossils. I guess you can call them fossils. They were, they looked pretty modern, but they're in this like really soft sandstone. Um, so yeah, lots of field trips, lots of influence there. Um, another one of the big things that I got to do, um, got to get into when being a part of the society, um, doing stand-up PowerPoint presentations. And I especially loved these um, because it was a uh, clear way and a fun way to share um, British Columbia's past with multiple different audiences. Um, this one in the top left, I'm in the Museum of Surrey. This was like, oh, this was a adult's night sort of thing. So we got a bunch of uh, drunk audience members watching me talk, ramble on about BC fossils. And um, down below and around the side here, this is Van Dusen Gardens. It's more of a juniorized talk about living fossils of BC plants and whatnot. And then the top here, I'm at the Port Moody Rock and Gem Club giving us, I think, the same presentation as the one I gave in Surrey. This was one of my best talks. And I think this was right before COVID. So I didn't really get to do this presentation a lot more after that. But it's really fun. Um, I wish I was still doing in-person talks. <laughs> um, so here we have some of the Van Paleo members kind of in action, um, just some of our good moments chilling around um, key points like down in the basement of um, the Ge Geological Survey of Canada, I think. Um, it's underneath a bank. So that was pretty fun. Um, we got Jim, Perry, I think Jonathan, 
and we're looking through all sorts of trays and that really inspired me um got me excited for getting into paleo seeing all these old dusty books and and rocks that haven't been touched in ages i'm just itching to get down into the like basements and and um collections and do some research um so we've got some photos from the last symposium i think this one here showing perry something on my phone <laughs> um it's more from the gsc this one with perry doing a little table display in um science world in vancouver we got the top part of the gsc that massive ammonite um reconstruction i think it's titanides um and then this is in ubc bd museum it was one of the displays i think there's a series of talks going on here and uh there's john and perry and a little display that i've got going on and here we've got um i think that's where we're meeting today actually um on dunbar street and those little laminated printouts that i made i've got new versions now so that'll be good um here are some more notable places that i've done either presentations or went to presentations so we've got Britannia Mines, one of my um, one of the most fun places to do a table display. Lots of cheery folks coming around, wanting to talk about fossils and rocks. We've got Sahar there, and I have Sahar to thank for a lot of things. Actually, she introduced me to Sheila Stencil um, from Minerals Ed, um, who kind of got me into the um, BC Mining Week presentations at Britannia Mines, and she also. Um, Sheila got me in contact with Guy Santucci, um, who led me all over um, Cranbrook to all these fossil sites, Cram, um, Cambrian Age, Devonian Age. And that's how I got into more of the Cambrian side of BC. I think that's definitely where I want to study more of. Um, so down below here, we've got um, to the left, this one's in Vancouver, the huge mineral show. Um, I did a few talks there, and um, I think one of which we had um, Laura there as well, and then this one's at a more recent um, show in um, Richmond Nature Park. So we got the, the banners up um, and some merch selling that Rod donated. And then over here we've got um, Perry and I went to... Uh, um, a talk in Vancouver. So that one was pretty fun as well. I don't think that was like under Van Paleo control or anything. Um, here we've got some, <laughs> a lot of uh, funny moments. So um, out in the field, um, I like to slide down slopes and stuff, easy way to get down. I'm not really one to be that careful at fossil sites. I'm safe and all, but um, having a lot of fun there. And I broke my hammer. I don't know how I did that. I was at, um, it's, it's a shale site. So it's like not dense rock or anything, nothing hard, just soft stuff. But I, I ended up breaking it. It's like one of the worst nightmares you can have if you don't have another hammer. It's like, what are you gonna use? Um, here we've got me as a kid. I think I'm in like the, the lower part of the UBC museum with some fish. Um, here's Pat having a mosasaur eat my head. This is like the local BC mosasaur. And um, Renee got a photo of me bringing a bunch of Dimetrodon toys to a Dimetrodon talk when I was younger as well. And I think one of the um, Richmond Nature Park talks, I brought this like big puppet that I made as a kid from uh, Halloween and puppet that around. So that was pretty fun. Um, one of the best moments of my life. So when I first joined the Vancouver Paleontological Society, I think one of the first talks they had was on Diplomoceros, and um, it was specifically on this toilet seat shaped fossil that was found, I think, alongside or in correlation with Diplomoceros, this heteromorph ammonite, the really big paperclip. I, I'm sure you all know it. Um, and I was tiny. I was, again, really small when I saw that and huge two meter long. Uh, yeah, I think it's two meter um, ammonite in a weird shape. And 
that was just insane. The first ever meeting. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. It instantly became one of my favorite fossils and I wanted to find it. Um, but the thing was, you could only find it um, like in Antarctica, Russia, and this tiny little island, Hornby Island off the coast of Vancouver Island. So it's like, um, I don't know, it was hard to get to as a kid. I, I really wanted to go there. I've heard from so many collectors that it was like the best place to find fossils. It's just amazing, just heaven. And turns out, yeah, I, I found out it is heaven. I love Hornby Island, one of my favorite places in BC. Um, not just for the fossils, but for the beaches and the biodiversity and marine life. But anyways, so the last symposium that happened, I was lucky enough to go to Hornby Island to the field trip that they had there. And even luckier to find... Um, a Diplomoceros or section of Diplomoceros and I was even gifted one as well a larger piece and that was the best uh, I was just living the dream in those moments and um, afterwards I painted this huge outline of the Diplomoceros shell to show people how big this animal really was and to, to give a bit of a scale right um, so we got Rod there taking a look at it Pat as well and um, this little section I've got wrapped up. It's very weathered, but I was happy with it nonetheless. Um, another great moment. Um, so I went to um, Racehorse Creek in Washington, the Chuckanut Formation, that big slide area, um, with George Musto down at the Washington University. And we hiked up there. Um, and at the top, there's, you know, huge footprints from massive birds, big palm fronds, just insane stuff, really amazing fossils. And um, with my keen eyes, now, at this point, I've, I've kind of been mentored enough that I know exactly what I'm looking for at each site, and it's, it's just built in now. So I'm looking for all these little footprints, and I find this boulder with these tiny little three and four toed trackways and this kind of line going down between them. And I'm like, that is something, that is something really cool. So I show George and it's this crocodile trackway with the little drag mark, this small crack crocodile um, made it. And it was actually a new fossil there. It wasn't um, discovered before. So it actually made it into one of his papers. And he mentioned me in the credits for it. And I thought that was very special. Um, so that was something that really um, made my day seeing that I could make it into a paper so early on. Um, and of course, being in the Paleontological Society, I get to meet a lot of other people from other societies, a lot of big names in the field, all the local celebrities. And that is just such an amazing part of it as well. Um, I get to meet so many people, um, teachers and professors, um, all sorts of retired and, and still, still functioning paleontologists and a paleo artists, like local paleontologists in certain areas that you don't, don't get to see often because they're so far away. Um, so here's a few honorable mentions of just amazing people that I got to meet in person. Um, I don't know if I'm running out of time here. Ooh, maybe I am. Okay, so I'll speed it up a bit. Um, here's some great photos of a lot of members together um, that I thought I'd share. They're really fun out in the field. Um, these ones were at the last symposium, GSC, um, Ashcroft, and I think this one was in Harrison. So we've got the whole squad out there. Um, loads of great people. So. To conclude my presentation, um, I, there are just so many people that I'd like to thank um, for mentoring me, to fueling my passion, and getting me this far in paleontology. Um, since I'm in second, I'm almost in second year university now at the U of A. I've held on to that passion and that love for paleontology for this long, thanks to you guys, like all of you. Um, so again, there's just so many I'd like to thank, but. Um, the, the specifics, the um, people that influenced me the most, I'd like to thank you guys, Perry, Jim, Renee, Rod, Pat, John, Laura, Kirsten, Sydney, Guy, Sahar, and Dan. You guys really have just made my life absolutely better in every way possible. And I hope you guys, I'd, I'd just like you guys to know that um, I wouldn't be where I am 
today without your guys' help. So <laughs> tearing up. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. Here we go. Okay. Great oh, presentation, man. Brennan. Um, your passion uh, is uh, fully revealed. Um, yeah. So that is, we have the times for uh, any questions that uh, people want to give the Brennan uh, about uh, his presentation or the history of the Van PS. Oh, I, I've got, there's 13 messages that have been sent during my presentation. I'm going to quickly look at those. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't notice um, I had a dinosaur. I was looking at them. A lot of them are very positive and we're telling you to see how well done. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, I didn't I see any questions. Great. 